When I was two years old, I told my parents very clearly what I wanted for my birthday, a corporation. I was an ambitious little nerd even back then. I mean, really, a corporation? This is my journey from two-year-old aspiring CEO to 24-year-old high school math teacher. I didn't aspire to the Fortune 500 for very long. I soon started school and discovered that I loved it, especially math. I was blessed with really terrific teachers all the way from K-12 through who nurtured my nerdiness and my stubborn quest for knowledge. My 8th grade math teacher, Mr. Perziola, had an especially strong impact on me. He had just arrived at my prep school from a tough public school in the eastern suburbs of Pittsburgh. On the first day of class, he got us out of our seats, lined us up against the wall, and proceeded to yell at us. My name is Mr. Perziola. Let me repeat that. My name is Mr. Perziola. Sounding like a drill sergeant having a really bad day. Although at the time I was confused by his intimidation tactics, I now understand what he was doing. Even though he was a very caring and dedicated teacher, he knew that discipline was a huge part of running an effective classroom, and his boot camp routine was part of maintaining that discipline. This was a lesson I would come to value highly. Anyway, it was around this time that my plans for the future began to solidify. I told a reporter for the local paper, who interviewed me after I won a math competition, that I was going to be a doctor, and that when I was done being a doctor, I would retire from medicine and become a middle school math teacher. That remained my plan all the way through high school graduation. Somehow, the powers that be decided that I should go to Harvard, where I cheerfully joined all the crazy pre-meds ready to spend 10 plus more years in school. By senior year, though, I realized I liked working with the students I tutored in math a lot more than I liked slaving over chemistry problem sets and microbiology labs. I decided to skip part one of my life plan and go straight to teaching. So I was off to UCSD as a math and biology teaching student, ready to get my double credential and MED. After a memorable cross-country trip with my dad, I arrived in San Diego, ready to join the ranks of those who had made my own school experience so wonderful. I started taking classes, and soon found myself assigned as a teaching assistant for a 7th grade life science class out in Tierra Santa, wherever that was. I would be lying if I said I was anything other than totally culture-shocked by my first experience in the classroom. Eighteen years of private school had done very little to prepare me for the reality of the public school system. Granted, I had cheerfully agreed to work with my CT's toughest class, but I was still unnerved by how hectic it was. I rolled up my sleeves, introduced myself as Miss Solomon, and dove in, first offering help to individual students who looked lost, and ultimately running around like a crazy person as hands started popping up more and more frequently. I guess they figured out I wouldn't bite. Following a brief stint in an avid classroom, I had a semester's worth of apprentice teaching at Mira Mesa High. I planned, I taught, I disciplined, huh, <laughs> that makes me laugh now. The following year when I was in the midst of my time at Gompers, I looked back on those months with nostalgia for the challenges I'd faced at Mira Mesa. After a summer of classes, classes, and more classes, and a grand total of 10 days actual break, I reported for two weeks of orientation at Gompers Preparatory Academy. Somehow I'd managed to survive the interview process, including a half hour with director, who did his darndest to convince me that no, I didn't really want the job. I expected that the year would be a challenge, but I had no idea what I was in for. Director wasn't joking when he said that teaching at Gompers was like being a missionary in Uganda. Here are some of the highlights from this year. I found out I really loved my students, even the ones who made me want to tear my hair out. My colleagues were awesome, and the other high school bio teacher was the best partner I could have asked for. I managed to go all year without having a student direct the F word at me. I survived packed, and I chaperoned my first high school dance. We took 150 ninth graders to the zoo via public transportation, and as far as I know, nobody got lost, stolen, or eaten. My time at GPA was a roller coaster from the very beginning. I went from excited to panicked to determined to disillusioned to hopeful, passing through every emotion in between, all in the first two weeks. I was constantly exhausted. I planned lessons like a mad woman, dragging myself outside the box to come up with ideas that would engage students who really couldn't give a damn about cellular respiration or mitochondria. I rejoiced when lessons went well and mourned when they didn't. I guided, I scolded, I lectured, I pleaded, I facilitated, I disciplined, I tutored, and little by little I reached a point where most of my students paid most of their attention most of the time. I'm not sure how many of them I actually reached, but every one of them gave me a final project that showed real effort and learning. Even the students who drove me the craziest produced work they could be proud of, and I was proud of them. I learned more during this year about teenagers, about biology, and about teaching than I ever have before. And I learned something else. Gompers might not be the right place for me in the long run, but I'll keep teaching as long as they'll give me a classroom and some students who'll listen, at least most of the time. <laughs>